Hi everyone, this is Dave AC and this is my vlog 197 for Friday the 27th of April 2012, recorded one day late again I'm afraid on the 28th. Yes, the strap line this time is timing issues, audio issues, sleep issues, but no issues with the why. But um, back to the usual format, direct to uh, webcam. Uh, last week, if you list, uh, watched episode uh, 196, you'll see I tried something different and it wasn't totally a success. What I did was use Screen grab matic to do a screen video presentation. Now, what I was doing is I was trying to combine my Dave AC V blog along with my Dave AC um, uh, not my Dave AC, with my Big and Fruity Wine Podcast. That's Big and Fruity Wine Podcast on Torch You, Torch You ID double one double two seven two. And I tried to do the introductions to that. Well, it didn't really work. screen o only seems to uh, save the uh, frame rate at about 10 or 12 frames a second. And for some reason, it messed up my audio. So what you saw last week was me... Um, putting a new soundtrack onto that video, which is why, if you looked at the little picture in the corner, I wasn't in sync with it. So apologies for that. But that also wasn't the end of my troubles. Uh, I also found when I listened back to the Big and Fruity Wine podcast, which I started uh, following on from that, there are all sorts of crackly noises on the recording, which I wasn't aware of. And that's going to lead to my sound issue things. But to, just to say, and also, I got so het up, I forgot to mention that um, last week, the wine that I had, the Black Tongue Shiraz, really was an excellent wine from Naked Wines. It's an, uh, an $18 wine, Barossa Valley, Wine of Australia, 14.5%. That really was a good, uh, a deep, uh, rich and uh, very, very satisfying three wine. Really one of the nice wines, nicest wines I've had from Naked Wines. Well, uh, what uh, what it turned out to be is um, I've got my uh, lovely uh, Sennheiser headsets, but with all the use that they get, and I've had these about uh, three or four years now, is um, it's to do with the actual controller on the actual cable. And more to the point, See, look, I've got it all messed up now. Um, where it joins here and there, it gets so wiggly, a bit like Yuri Gala bending a fork, that in actual fact what's happened, and that is, is rather damaged, uh, it's shorting out. And when I listen back to episode 35 of the Big and Fruity Wine podcast, uh, the audio is not too good. So if that is the first one you tuned in to listen to, please listen to the other ones. And hopefully uh, we won't have that issue again. But because this is an actual USB headset, um, one of the great things about it is that uh, the cable goes to the computer is in two parts. There's the analog audio, and then there's like a half meter section with the USB electronics on it that changes the analog to a digital signal. And it plugs into female plugs here and then goes into the USB port. Because of that, it means I've been able to use the USB part. And what I've done now, I'm using these for the moment. Now, these are only fairly basic, you know, £10, $15 um, Skype headset. But I've been able to plug them into the higher quality USB electronics that came with the Stenheiser set. Uh, so hopefully that audio will sound better on Big and Fruity. And I've ordered myself a new set of these. It's going to come in about a week. They're normally about £60, £65. Pounds. Got them for £45 pound off eBay. As soon as those come, plug them back in and hopefully we'll be back uh, with a good quality sound on the different podcasts. Did I say podcasts? Let's go and talk about the podcasts. Um, well, there's no new Dot Who Podshot out yet, but I do know there's a new one on the way because I was on it with Lewis and Taris. Uh, that is Podshock 269. So uh, Lewis will be doing editing on that about now and hopefully it will be up on the feeds in a few days or a week or so. That's Podshock 269. 
Of course, the Cultural Collective have been busy. Last Sunday, that was the 22nd of April, we did episode 147, uh, Staples of Sci-Fi and Fantasy. And that was using a page from Den of Geek. So if you put Den of Geek in Google and Staples of Sci-Fi and Fantasy, you'll see the little page that we're using as our starting point. And midweek, we put up another one of our commentaries, and this was the final part story of Series 2 of Sherlock, the Rick and Mac Fall. And uh, that concludes the, our coverage of Sherlock for the moment. Uh, and, of course, you can find that at cultdom.com. You can find it at iTunes, or also where all our commentaries are at zarban.com. Hope you'll give that a listen. We might be taking a little bit of a break this Sunday, uh, but soon we will be doing commentary on another series of programmes. Look out for details, or indeed we'll be mentioning them on the Cultum. Um, on Sunday the 29th, that's tomorrow, uh, we are going to be doing 10 best retorts in sci-fi and fantasy, and that's from the io9 site. So again, if you put io9 into Google and 10 best retorts in sci-fi and fantasy, You'll uh, find whether it's going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's "I'll be back" or some other famous line from sci-fi and fantasy. Join us. I'll listen later to find out. Okay. Well, how much time is that used up? Oh, good heavens, David! I'm not going to do any other tech, uh, but I must, must, must mention this DVD, the Clone Wars. Now. Um, this is the second go I've had at recording this. Uh, by the way, this is the animated feature film that went first before it then went into a series on TV. Now, I have set it up here on my uh, iPad. Um, but the trouble is, this screen's reflecting so much. So if I play it... Seems to mean you're getting too much reflection there. But what I'm going to do is stop it and advise you to actually go to YouTube and watch the trailer of this. Um, I have tried moving the camera before, but I'll tell you what, I'm so paranoid after this headphone set, as I say, this wiggling thing doing it. If you remember, those people who have been watching me for a long time, this webcam that I'm using, which again was a £70 webcam, um, this is a replacement one because exactly the same thing. I was lifting the camera off, moving it around, lifting it, twisting it, catching it on things, but just to project it onto another screen and um, it wasn't all that successful anyway. And um, eventually it meant I had to replace my camera. So what do I think of it? Well, the animation is absolutely brilliant. I don't think it's my cup of tea. I don't think I'll go on and watch all the actual series, you know, by all, and they're all available, of course, on DVD, may even be available on Blu Blu-ray. But uh, I'm about uh, oh, nearly halfway through this at the moment, and I must admit, I am surprised at the quality of the effort that they've gone into to do this. It's not just a kid's cartoon. This is sci-fi animation and pretty much at its best. And from what I hear from Darth Skeptical on the Cultural Collective, you know, the TV series is just getting better and better in terms of how it, uh, the lavish animation that's used on it. So um, if you loved uh, Star Wars and you have a real affection for it, I would say this is a real value buy. If you remember, I've been showing this for so long, I had the price ticket on it, and it was £6. That's $10. An absolute bargain for a full-length film. OK, I'm going to go to my wine. And, uh, oh, uh, yes, now, I'll go to the wine. Where is it? There it is. It's over here. And here it is. It's called... The Pilgrimage, Extra Mandura, that's a self-governing region in Spain, 
native grapes of Spain, and that's their name for them, the Mazulo, is it, I think. Um, but there is another name for that grape variety. 2010. Now, there's no real label on this, but it does tell me here it's 14%, and it is a Gary Anderson wines.co.uk and I'm just going to click on their website now at uh, Guy Anderson this is the um, pilgrimage um, Mazulu uh, let me spell that M-A-Z-U-E-O-L um, and it's normally about uh, £7.50 £8. so that's about a 13 or 14 dollar wines and the great variety is also known as a uh, Carrigan, and again I've got that wrong, so I'm going to spell it out. That's C A R I G N A N, Carrigan, a Carrigan, and um, it is a lovely, lovely uh, deep dark red colour. So let's have a little test as I watch my time. Mm, yeah, we've got uh, almost cherries coming off there and red berries. Oh, that is very nice. Slightly, not a harsh ending, but there's a slight bite coming in towards the end. Hmm. Let me have another taste. Yeah, actually, there's quite a little bit of structure coming through there at the end. You're getting a little bit of vanilla and spice. It is aged in oak barrels, but not for very long. I think it's only in oak for two or three months, <clears throat> certainly not six months. So there's only a very light background of oak and vanilla in there. So the predominance is the, the berry, red berry fruit. Mm. Let me just uh, read what it says here. A very approachable wine with pronounced raspberry, cherry and spice and hints of toasty oak. It's full bonded and intense flavours of soft wild berry fruit and long smooth spicy finish. Remember this is the winemaker saying this. The wine is perfect with tapas, barbecues, lamb and duck dishes. I think very nice, it's very nice uh, I would think for a nice summer barbecue. It really is... Um, Quite a uh, quite nice wine indeed. There uh, it gets the uh, the second showing, which is always a sign that I've enjoyed my wine, especially if I can focus it. There we go. And um, the Extremadura area of Spain, by the way, it abuts up against Portugal, so it's central Spain, right up against uh, the border with Portugal. And um, this, as I say, this grape. Uh, which is C-A-R-I-G-N-A-N, is known under a variety of synonyms throughout Spain. Uh, uh, it's called this Carinina in, uh, with Maluzo, Tinto Maluzo, and all sorts of names that I can't pronounce, um, but really very, very nice indeed. I've got one more mention of wine because I have just got a minute left. And that is to say, on Mike Randathor's Radio Free Caming quiz show last night, uh, both Ian and myself were drinking one of my staple wines, the Campo Vigio. Uh, it's a Rioja. It's Crienza, meaning uh, 12 months in oak. Uh, this is the 2008 bottle. I think I was drinking, actually. Uh, I think this is an older bottle I saved. I think I was drinking from the 2010, and uh, that is really one of my favourite uh, Spanish wines at the moment, and I do know that Ian enjoyed that. I think it's, uh, is that 13.5%? I don't know. Anyway, that's it. Sorry about the very brief look at the Clone Wars. I may just mention it again when I watch to the end. But with that, I'm completely out of time. Hope to catch you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.